So I'm Ashley Howard, I'm the head teacher at Mayfield School. The exciting bit about this school is we're an all-through school, so we have just under 1,500 children from Year R all the way to Year 11. Mayfield community is, is, is diverse um, in the sense that there is a high proportion of pupils who are disadvantaged um, and eligible for free school meals, but also we serve a, a community that is multicultural. Everybody is coming to our school from their different experiences as well, whether that's around religion, whether that's around belief, whether that's around their socio-economic background and that has an influence on our pupils. So the way in which we would address that in terms of their mental health um, is about speaking about that, being really open. Um, that can be really difficult for pupils and parents and carers to be able to share and, sp and speak about, and it's about building up that trust within that community. One of the biggest things um, for me as head teacher of the school is to be able to um, work with a team of staff to grow young people. So we're not just working and looking at the academic success of pupils, but, but developing and growing children and pupils and students um, as decent human beings. With the introduction of Mind Apples, um, actually it's the opportunity to talk about uh, and be open about our, our own mental health, talk about what other strategies that we, we use individually, but how we can share that much wider um, and actually maybe even partner up, pair up and keep coming back to this so it's a much bigger profile across the school, um, sharing sort of our experiences, what that looks like. Secondary school pupils are um, hitting the emotional um, development stage which uh, they really struggle with. So actually arming them with those tools to really help them understand their mental health um, and to really be proactive about their mental health is, is vital for them. When we talk about mental health, five a day can also help. What do you think are your five a day? What do you do to look after your mental well-being? As members of staff, the, the resources that we've been given by Mind Apples have been brilliant. We literally can just take them and run with them for delivering to um, all our staff and also delivering to our pupils. They're really eye-catching, really colourful and, and really engaging. There's lots of sort of testing periods throughout the school um, that government have imposed on school and education um, and which in itself brings sort of anxiety and tension to school staff and that also then um, leads on to pupils' anxieties. So there's a huge amount of pressure from, from the beginning, I believe, and it's thinking for us, how as a school can we reduce those stresses? How can we reduce those anxieties? If we can put in some of those strategies that we can have as a whole school approach, but also that they can have as individuals, that will help them to manage those stress and anxieties better. I like to listen to music a lot, and I play lots of instruments as well. I like eating. I like sleeping. I pray and shower before I sleep and read my special book. I'm a massive advocate of me positive mental health. You know, I've suffered for anxiety for years. And when I was at school, there was just no support at all. And I think the more we talk about mental health and the more we open this conversation, the more accessible it's going to become and the less scary it's going to become. Preparation, coursework, uh, their studies, revision, what their target grade is, what their predicted grade is. Some of the things that we might do to support the pupils and students at Mayfield are um, looking very carefully with regards to the programmes that we um, introduce. So for example, Mind Apples um, and the introduction of um, five things a day that can help and support around mental health. Play football, exercising, sleeping and showering. Reading, listening to music. Sitting down with pupils, getting them to talk openly. So some pupils will be sitting down talking about the things that they can do at home, um, around getting out into outdoor space, um, 
uh, spending more time with uh, siblings or their family, uh, getting out doing gardening, going to extracurricular clubs, doing runs, uh, even going swimming. I think the pandemic's been really tough. I think especially for our students in kind of year eight, they've missed a lot of their transition that they would do in year six. And actually, you know, that's had a real massive impact on kind of stress and actually kind of how to resolve deal with social situations. Social media is a big pressure on young people. You know, they. You can never really fully escape school in that sense. You're constantly, there's that constant dialogue with friends or not friends on the end of your phone, which I think is very difficult. And obviously that links a lot to stress and sleep as well, which obviously, you know, it's a vicious cycle. As soon as your stress levels increase, then your sleep quality goes down. And if your sleep quality goes down, then you become more stressed. So I think it's really important to make sure as a school we're supporting their mental health, because ultimately, if their mental health is better, they're going to be achieving better in school because they'll be in a better mental state to do that. Often what happens is that when people are talking about mental health, it has a negative connotation that something is wrong, it's not okay. Um, in my opinion, we need to be talking positively about mental health. Everyone has it, but it looks different for every, every single person.